as said. Jeannie Warren was born in South Korea and immigrated to the United States in 1987. Her favorite subjects are those found in nature, which inspire everyday life. He says, I'm inspired by the beauty and complexity of nature in our surroundings. I try to paint the essence of my subjects using my sincere feelings for nature. Since soon began painting full time in 1998, she has many exhibitions and earned enormous, um, numerous awards. She is a signature member of the National Watercolor Society, American Watercolor Society, Southern Watercolor Artists, Texas Watercolor Society, Purple Sage Brush, and the Transparent Watercolor Society. Her paintings and articles have been in Artist Magazine, Watercolor Magic Magazine, North Light Book, Southwest Art Magazine, Watercolor Artist Magazine, Drawing Three and Four. Her paintings are in permanent collections of private, corporate, and educational institution in national and international. You can look at her at tunewarren.com. And she has lots of instructional books and DVDs also that you can get on her. So soon, if you're ready to get started, uh, we'll let you have the floor. And uh, oh, okay. Just that's the most awful moment is when they read five, like uh, soon, young Warren comes out. I'm like, stop. So, um, today I am going to show. I was thinking about, I have this painting for a while. I think so. I might even show where I showed this one wash, and I thought. Um, I can show this one detailing out. This is Iris. And I've been frisketing uh, very diligently. Can you see this picture? Um, I had to actually kind of wash over with uh, all sorts of kind of uh, yellow. And I think I even put purple and yellow, purple, maybe red. I don't know what kind of colors all over the place. And then I applied this one yellow here. I, when I took this picture of the, this, isn't it beautiful? I love this part. I don't know what they call it. It's in a beard. It's one of those beard. It's kind of quite different beard than as a user um, can iris. And I have this one and I wanted to paint for a long time, but somehow I never did it. But I am going to, uh, finally, I'm going to start in a demonstration. So eventually I'm going to finish this painting. So I thought, okay, I'm going to do this. So in the beginning, I think so what I did was I read the whole paper and I actually applied to some, can you see this kind of a little bit dirty? So if you look at this, this white paper, this is white paper and then I applied very light wash all over the place to get rid of the white, okay? So. Now I'm going to actually start working on, this is better, okay, this one. So I can do my palette more. And I think so I'm going to have this background black, so choose. Impacts are much greater than. Um, can you hear me okay? Is it litter? Can you hear yes, me? Okay? Yes, okay. I can hear you fine. I don't know right. about everybody that's else, good. but I can. All right, that's yes, good. I can. All right, so I am going to make yellow go stronger because yellow is the, uh, um, because I applied the yellow, but it's not strong enough. I want to go stronger. So I wanted to make this background black. So if I don't make this foreground stronger, because flower itself is lighter, so I cannot just go too light and, and that background is going to... separate the foreground. So I wanted to make the subject matter as strong as I can. And it doesn't mean that I cannot go back and later do more, but 
Why not? When I have a chance to do it, I'll just go strong. So while I'm doing this one, um, I think maybe you can probably put them in a chat and Lynette can actually ask me. Is that okay? Can I give me a, a question that I will uh, try to answer, okay? Yes, you can just put it on the chat there and I'll watch anything popping up and I'll tell you if there's any questions. All right. I think this is a, um, I am ready as I can be. One time, I was- Susan, thinking, one moment. Someone's asking if you're using purple for the wash. I did purple for the wash. Purple in a center area. Actually, I had a light purple all over the place. Can you see this light? Actually, I use uh, um, dioxygen. I think that's what I use, light purple all over the place. And after that, can you see this kind of little messy area right here? I put the yellow in it, can you see? And yellow here and yellow here. But this is the part. Can you see this white lighter area in center? I yes. didn't use any yellow because yellow and purple are complementary colors. So they make a little bit of a um, kind of muted color. So I did that this one, I didn't want to use any yellow. So. And I am going to go more of a um, purple uh, glaze, can I section by section? Because I'm not done with purple, but it's, I just kind of put generally here and there to uh, make the color stronger. I love this area. I think this kind of yellow and this brighter purple the beard. And actually, I have never seen kind of, oh, I seen this one. I think it's, I went back to this one. I took a picture at the Japanese garden at the, um, no, it's botanical garden in Fort Worth. And I went back, I wanted to get a, a I went back uh, next year and I didn't see this one again. So I'm not sure what happened. So where the yellow, I'm going stronger. I'm using actually kind of permanent yellow dip, which is kind of cadmium yellow dip almost. And I am gonna go lighter yellow. Before, when I was washing, I was applying it a little bit loosely, kind of with a, uh, just generally here and there, because I didn't, I didn't mind yellow going all over the place because I wanna, I'm going to make background black. So uh, I just kind of loosely apply it. Right now, I'm gonna go this one little bit stronger, but I am, I am applying it more section. I'm not applying loosely. And I was applying loosely here, but it's a, I am applying it where I want it to be. I'm not just kind of spreading all over the place. On top just a little bit. Um, and this one, I'm actually using a little lighter color. I have a, a here, I don't know if you can see or not. This one I'm not using, but this one is a little lighter yellow which is permanent yellow, like which is cadmium yellow medium maybe. Because I'm using yellow to make this area that, uh, where I wanted to go push it back. Because if I make a, a kind of just darker purple, it's not good. Everything is gonna be just stands out. But uh, uh, I'm using this yellow to push it back because it's a complementary color just kind of uh, make it muted naturally, so. And 
And this morning, I was getting ready. And I thought, oh my God, this is kind of, um, I thought I was late again. Because one time I was <laughs> doing Zoom and uh, uh, it was from Maryland. And I thought, oh, it's kind of 10 o'clock, so I have time. And I was kind of getting ready. And actually, I so even camera wasn't set, had camera was set, but I wasn't ready. And they called me up and they said, uh, we are uh, on. I said, what? And I said, I think it's when she said, we are on. That's when I realized, oh my God, Maryland is an hour earlier than we are. So I had a little bit of a jitter, jittery feeling this morning and I was kind of preparing and I thought, oh, this one is going to be early. And I realized, oh, this is Texas. <laughs> Get darker. So I'm going to put this one stronger yellow. So even yellow, I am uh, slowly uh, kind of bring this on up. So edges are a little bit darker. Actually, this photo has a little bit of a darker, kind of yellowish tone to it, so. Okay, so I think it's yellowish done, and it's a little bit of yellow here. So if you look at it, um, I don't know how much the uh, camera can take, where the yellow is lighter yellow. And this purple is actually uh, darker, but it's clear. It kind of looks uh, brighter looking because there's no yellow in the coat to it. So that's my idea. So, okay, I need to let this one dry. And uh, uh, I think this kind of, while this one's drying out and I want to do something different. It's not something different because I wanted to show how to make cherries, kind of blowing cherries. I think this one is that I just kind of have time. So I just put this uh, freeze kit on uh, my glass freeze. The main thing was because we don't have a kind of uh, lots of time. So I just wanted to uh, show these cherries. So in order to make that cherry close, because even this one is kind of red, and I have a little bit of a yellow here. You have to have a good, strong yellow undercoat. Because if I, without yellow undercoat, your cherry is not going to glow. So that was the idea that I wanted to show. Because I first get that highlight. So I'm just gonna go cherry is strong yellow. And it actually, even this stems, a green stem, so yellow is going to be a good. Whoops. Okay, now I'm gonna wait. And usually when I paint, when I glaze between, I uh, kind of on one more kind of uh, layers, I always wait until it dries out. And it's uh, usually I don't do is, I don't paint wet to wet because this one has a red, this is yellow, and it's kind of, you could put the yellow all over and you could put this red here. I usually don't like paint that way because when you have a red over, yellow, the red is sometimes red is stronger. And some of the pigment, I don't know which one because I don't want to study it. Some of the pigments are more aggressive than others. So sometimes they kind of take over. So um, I don't like them to just kind of push some of the color over so you lose what's undercoat. I usually like everything undercoat to uh, stay as is. So the one way to do it is let it completely dry and I can actually apply next coat. Uh, on top of it. So I have to let this one dry too again. Um, I think I'm going to mute it.
and uh, because it's going to be noisy, so um, I can actually uh, try a little bit, okay? Right, and uh, um, so sugar land actually you grow sugar. We used to. So you have land grow sugar still? No. Uh, no, I really don't think they grow any sugar here anymore. Uh, it's, uh, now it's just like. Anywhere there was sugar that used to be grown is is a yeah, house property, housing subdivisions, and such. Sugar mean is you grow sugar like a sugar cane. Yes, I see. We grow cotton though here. Yes. Oh yeah, we do grow cotton. Yeah. Uh -huh. Yep, in in uh, Sugarland, yeah, it's, it's around oh. yeah, sides of the road sometimes, yeah. <laughs> because uh, um, what is the uh, how long does it take to get there and cut some another uh, kind of Sugarland from forward? You know, three hours. Ooh, three hours. Oh, that's pretty far, huh? All right. Yeah. Now I'm gonna go. It's the same. They didn't change our dough. I'm gonna get a clean water too. Because I'm gonna get a I have a little bit of yellow water, can you see? And I wanted to work on uh purple and you know, because it's I'm you if this is kind of dark or color, I don't mind having this yellow water. But right now I'm going to have a lighter purple. And this yellow water probably will affect uh, affect to the uh, the purple clean uh, light purple. So I'm gonna change this one to clean water. Have you, have you heard about cotton um, pearls, pearl, 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 like a, um, you make a necklace, pearl, P-E-A-R, pearl, P-E-A-R. And uh, uh, I heard that it's like poor men's pearl, poor woman's pearl. Have you heard about that? And what are they doing with that? They make a jewelry out of it because um, the pearl is kind of very expensive in olden days. So um, they make it's kind of very um, no, it's just kind of they make a pearl. I, uh, I I saw that one in the uh, South Carolina. They grow cotton, and uh, they they have, they say that is a uh, uh, Poor man's pearl. Like a, a pewter, is, a pewter is, she was going to give it to me and it's like, I do want to take it. I should, I should have taken. But it's a thing, it looks like pearl, but uh, uh, it's not a real one. It is a fake, uh, it's a, it made from cotton. Isn't it cool? So you didn't know that, huh? It's kind of... No, I've never heard about that. I wonder if they just, you must add something to the cotton itself. And I think it's just kind of, they make a cotton uh, thread very fine and they just kind of roll it. And I think so later they put some kind of color to it, kind of a um, little bit of a, a, what do you call that? Simmering paint or something they put it on. It looks like pearl. 
they nobody mm. tell me I don't know that so so I am doing kind of I'll add this detail because of where the uh, so I'm not You see, I am giving this one a little bit of a, uh, I'm not making smooth because of this area is, has a little bit of a, because I can do this one because I have this purple uh, spread around. So it's, so I'm painting on not white paper, I'm painting on purple paper, kind of undercoat. So. So when you when I'm doing this one, okay. if you look at it, can you see I actually wash my brush? Okay. Lots of the time this is the problem people have. I have water on my right side because I'm right-handed. I have a cloth. I wash my brush and I always dip. This one, so it's kind of, uh, I don't have much water in my brush. If I just go this one directly, I have too much water. So it flooded this whole area. So I'm taking my water off, you know, I'm using only tip of my brush. Can you see? If I have a full, can I, if my brush is, brush has a full of this purple, I cannot go this one, control this one this, this way because it floods the whole area. You see, so I'm using only tip of my brush where I have a, a color to make this one work. And after that, I will just tip of my brush. I will just kind of blend some of them. It's just loosening up a little bit. So instead of kind of hard edges, some of them I'm loosening up to give this darker and light. So have you ever uh, painted about cotton? I think that'll be just kind of very pretty. I'm going to, I have some, uh, I brought some cotton from the South Carolina and I saved it. I think one of those here, but I wanted to see the cotton feel. And that's very pretty. A uh, cotton flower is actually like a really? small hibiscus flower. I know. And I remember when I was young, you know, that cotton is kind of, uh, in the beginning was kind of a little green. I remember we ate that stuff. <laughs> we have nothing to eat. So I think I remember it was kind of a little bit sweet. Huh. But we uh, kind of, we ate that bud. Hmm. I guess you could. And, you know, yeah. it's another one. Uh, okra is another one that's, that's kind of an interesting, you know, it has a similar flower on it, too. Oh, uh, yeah. It's just literally it's kind of purplish. I, I remember it was kind of pretty. So at the time, so I, just, I want to eat the bird. Probably we have to steal it from the um, somebody else kind of feared or something we have because they don't want us to pick that one up because that's going to be a cotton. <laughs> we are hungry. We got to eat something, maybe. So I'm just kind of doing this detail going inside. So when I do this with kind of flower painting, it's not, you know, if I wanted to paint something loose, that is kind of different story. But if I want to make something, and I think it's the inside right here, it's kind of much redder. And I have this permanent rose. I guess I'm going to use clean rose, kind of. So I want to make this one a little bit redder. I'm going to go this one a little bit further.
And this is going to be where the flowers start. So when I'm uh, blending this one, I'm not using lots of water either. If I use too much water, I lose the color because the kind of swashing is happening right here. So I'm going to actually have one more time. So it is kind of a more, uh, I like to uh, make it center dark when I'm painting flower in this area. If that's so where uh, it's holding the uh, flower itself. But uh, um, I think this is here too. This flower is very interesting. That iris, the part, the two petals that come down the front are called the falls. And yeah, then this is a falls. This the must be weird. Mm -hmm. The style or something is what it's called. This one right here. Mm -hmm. The styles. You know, when I was writing a book because about the flower book, I have to because I never, I don't know what it is. I like to paint flower, but I don't know what it is. So I have to get the, uh, the flower book and it's, I have to study what that is. And now kind of, I forgot everything already. I know this is a forward, this is a beer, but yeah, I don't know. But the iris is the one that I love to paint because it kind of gave me a good composition. And I think this one is in a way, it kind of static, static, because this one is kind of, can you see it? Two of them goes here, one goes up here. It just kind of looks too symmetry. I think it's just kind of a symmetry. So it could be very boring, but that's why I thought, but I wanted to do this one this way because I want to show this. Usually I will not uh, have an iris pointed this direction, but this one I did. Because it usually is one four comes out here, another one goes back. It's kind of a little, little bit flow. This one doesn't have that big, but it's okay. I think it's because my idea was to show something different. I knew this much. All right. Did you say Sugarlands, do you have a freezing cold today? Not freezing cold. It's in the 60s, the low 60s, uh, which okay. is real. It's much cooler than normal. Yeah, I think it's, we had a 50. It was kind of cool. I love it. So I'm not complaining. I think it's Break about out the time. Sweater. Took out sweaters. Yeah, I think it's about time this we get a cool weather. So. All right, so I actually, with the red, I actually had a little bit of a, a detail coming out. And I think I like this. So, so right now it's a red and I later, I'm going to apply green. I think I'm gonna go a little bit of red all the way down. So green cannot be too obnoxious. I think green can be very obnoxious. I think that's the only color. Other ones can be pretty, but other ones kind of green can be never pretty by itself. All right, that's pretty good. All right, and I'm gonna have this one where the red is. Instead of, a, uh, instead of making this one to appear the kind of per, uh, orange area, instead of going uh, orange right away, I have a strong yellow, so I'm applying this red. And lots of the time when I'm paying, I kind of try it. It's kind of, I don't know how things are going to be turned out. So uh, even, you know, uh, it's, it's never ever the same anyway, because uh, the effects are different. What kind of undercoat you have, what kind of, um, kind of uh, paper you have sometimes. It's kind of because I kind of uh, know the paper because I usually use Winston and Newton and Arches when I'm painting. But if you have uh, something different kind of a paper, it affects are different because sometimes it doesn't uh, accept color because usually 
kind of uh, hovering over. It's kind of is what do you call that one? It just kind of it, it just kind of doesn't mingle. It just kind of stay on top. It doesn't soak into the paper. But I I don't know why. But it's a uh, and I use a uh, Winsor and Newton because I think so you can still buy Winsor and Newton. But I am a kind of a, a paper holder. It's not good. Sorry, but so. Before, you know, I need it. Do I need that paper? No, I don't know. I said, I don't need it, but I don't do that anymore. But because I had to stop because I have so many paper. Because uh, if there's a sale going on and I will buy it, work. And am I painting that much? No. And it's like, if there's going to be sale going on. So I don't actually even watch the, that, um, what they call, do you know, that email about the sale and I'm like, it's, I just can't help it because I just buy that paper and I am glad I did. Sometimes the craziness work out okay because right now, Arch's papers are a little different, uh, different than um, before, the sizing is a little different. So I still have that old Arch's paper and old Winsor & Newton paper. So I'm still using it, but after you run out, because uh, I have to um, kind of get used to using uh, the new one. So, all right, now I'm going to go for the purple again. So I did this area. Can you see it's kind of start to just kind of coming out? My idea is right here. So when I have kind of, I just kind of go this one over and over and over and over. So lots of time when I'm painting kind of demonstration, I have a hard time, um, you know, because I'm, I never finish painting because I, even for myself, I finish cat text forever and I cannot finish my painting within you know, two or three hours because I just layers and layers and layers. And I don't like painting look like I sketched it. I want to be look like, I like a <laughs> little serious. So it doesn't mean that I don't sketch around because sometimes, you know, I can actually paint very loose and within a 20 minute, 30 minute, I can ask uh, kind of what is it? is totally different. But when I have a, a demonstration, usually I wanted to show what I do, but the sketch like things, I don't do that all the time because that one is just kind of, if I have some paper left and I wanted to, uh, Get rid of it, and I usually have a very simple kind of painting that I do. So that one is not actually my kind of. I do it, but not because I do that. That is a serious. I do that as a, my fun painting. I like that this one is going to be stay strong. And when I do that, because this one is kind of drying out, I'm looking for a little bit of a um, dry spot because uh, uh, this area is kind of wet and I'm gonna move out to something uh, where the wet spot is not the dry spot. So I don't dis disturb the, the pigment already. Yeah. So usually if you want to keep the detail, make sure you paint it and let it dry and go back later after it dries, then you can actually make uh, maintain that detail and you can actually layer more of the detail more detail on top. It doesn't mean once you do it, you cannot do it. You can always go back to some more, but you wanted to do it when it's wet, when it's dry. So I think it's kind of, I even say one time, I think it's in, even I wrote it in the book that watercolor painting kind of layers and dry the layer and kind of before you have another coat is the virtue of watercolor. Kind of depends on what kind of style you do, like uh, my kind of style, kind of detail and uh, uh, layering it. And it's, for me, this one is actually more, if you wanted to paint this one detail, this is kind of mistake proof. You can always go back 
correct it. And you can always put more instead of pushing it until it seems not right. Just right. And I will do this one as much as I can. At some point, I will not kind of finish the finer detail. I'm just kind of spreading out kind of big, a uh, little bit larger uh, detail. But eventually, uh, I'm going to do finer detail after background is done. Because background is going to be, I'm planning to do black. Because I want to give that effects of this. And when I do black, that... Uh, Sometimes kind of colors kind of washed out because the background is dark, but uh, uh, I will never know that how much I need to make this one stand out. So instead of trying to guessing, I will wait until the background is done, black, and I will just kind of detail out to finalize it. So. So Sugarland is uh, north of a forward or south of a forward? Are you saying Fort Worth? No, it's kind of Sugarland is, yeah, from the forward. Are you north of the forward or south of the forward? Kind of we are south of Fort Worth, definitely. Oh, it's the south of the forward, okay. We're actually like um, kind of a suburb of Houston on the southwest uh, side. Okay, okay. So you are pretty far. Yeah. So you're kind of a warm place south of Houston. I heard somebody said like a... Um, is it the Colorado the person who said it's kind of most the hottest place he has ever been to was Houston? <laughs> yeah. I guess if they came in the summertime for sure. Yeah. I think it's because of the humidity. I think it was kind of killing you guys. But yes. it's one good thing is kind of plants love the humidity. They say you get less wrinkles if you live in a humid climate. I know. If you are, are living in a, so that's why um, people who live in um, like a, an island, they're kind of, they have, they don't have a wrinkle. Mm -hmm. humidity, play, humidity makes your skin looks good, I heard, yes. I think the person hadn't been to New Orleans. I think New Orleans beats Houston for heat and humidity any day of the week. Oh, is it? Maybe that person never been to New Orleans then. I heard that New Orleans. Yeah, it's because it's kind of um, the Gulf of Mexico. It's right there. It's right on the water. So, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. Probably that's true. Can you see what's going on here? Oh, it's pretty, huh? Yes. It's actually pretty in a... Uh, what do you call a screen? Because you don't see much of a, a little bit of a, a winkle stuff. It's not just a winkle, but it's like a messy stuff. 
which can, you gotta have some messy stuff to make it pretty. You know, so everything pretty is no longer pretty. When you have a messy stuff, have a little bit of prettiness, so appreciate it. <laughs> So um, it's kind of hard to see this because um, could you give me some kind of a time uh, when you have uh, about 20 minutes left or something? So All I right, can, sure can. Uh -huh, so I can do the background so you can see uh, that what the effect's going to be because we, I don't have uh, uh, enough time to finish this one. So I just kind of do the center and I want to do a little bit of yellow outside and I want to do this. Because this one is kind of generally a purple, but top is going to be so I'm gonna go with this purple outward. So this one is gonna be neat black. Because I first get this area big time right here. Can you see it? So this way I can actually, uh, when I go to black, I don't have to worry about losing this. Okay, I wanna go this strong purple. Because I saved this area white, so I can have this purple shows up strong. Because if I have yellow, the purple is not going to be clean purple. It's going to be dirty purple. So some of the yellow area I'm going to put right here is going to be turned into dirty purple. Can you see? This is kind of hard to see, probably screen, but this area I have a yellow. Can you see? So kind of add this area turn into a little bit of a dirty purple. So I'm using. Um, Dioxygen, and, uh, uh, this is, I have, a, a, I'm using Winsor & Newton dioxygen, but I think it's a, I don't know what it is. This dioxin, every company you buy dioxin, they, they look good, which is kind of same. And they are actually kind of very pretty purple. I'm gonna wait until it dries out so I can go back. Okay, I'm gonna go for this area. So if I don't have this yellow, because of that, everything is gonna be just flat purple. So this yellow actually makes it kind of, uh, this clean purple is brighter. And you see always, when you have a, a only pretty color, sometimes it's kind of hard to make the pretty color stand out. But when you have kind of muted color, the colors are not that uh, clean, then your kind of clean color will stand out better because today you are comparing it right next to it. And I think it's a kind of, I was teaching, um, I was kind of volunteering at the Wyoming because I, we were having uh, some kind of a uh, conference kind of the teaching and the, uh, or the instructor um, or support, I think it's just kind of uh, having a uh, sponsoring one of those high school kids and uh, uh, they are kind of painting and we are just kind of giving them advice or something. And as we are having a, a plein air painting, this Wyoming is beautiful at fall. And we are painting and the girl was kind of having, um, painting everything so pretty. So I kind of gave the, this uh, idea because I think it was kind of pretty good because it's kind of mean, but I told her, do you know how to uh, kind of you go to more to kind of hang around to see boys kind of when they're a teenager? And she say yes. So, you know, sometimes, you know, some girls are uh, kind of some boys who always want to talk to, and sometimes, kind of, sometimes, kind of, they, you know, they want to talk to, right? And that happened. And so I asked her, Do you know how can you, or uh, the boys always want to talk to you? How do you know how to make it? And she said, No. And I told her, you always go more with a girl. 
ugly than you are. Then all the boys will laugh. Can I would want to talk to you, not not uh, other girl. And she thought that was so funny, but she made it. So I think it's, I kind of gave them gave her the idea. If you wanted to make something stand out, make it pretty and everything else a little ugly. The men muted or darker or you know something uh, is not kind of brighter. And she kind of understood and it was kind of mean example, but she understood. But I think sometimes high school kids, it's kind of mean example is better than just kind of nice word. Who knows? So she saw that pain, so she did better than I did probably. It's good. So I did this one and then I have this one, it's kind of have a little bit underneath. And I applied this one, it's a little thicker. Can you see it kind of washed out? So after it dries, I am going to uh, apply one more time to make this one stronger. All right. And this bottom is going to be green. So I just want to put some green on. Right. So I have this green. And usually, if I have a green hooker screen, I think this is hooker screen. And even hooker screen, I think this person green is going to be okay because I have a yellow, kind of yellow and red in it. So I'm instead of mixing other color, I'm just going to apply it because I have a red color in it. That's good. It's strong. And I, I'm going to mix maybe a little bit of a Burn sienna. I like burn sienna or burn sienna or burnt oranges or kind of, yeah. So I make a little bit of a, what you call olive green. Better. I think it's maybe that was my personal choice because I like olive green better than too bright blue green. About this much. I will leave this area. This is going to be red. And I think is I wanted to play this area big time because I wanted to have to love this area. I think it's what colleagues, I think is what they call. I can actually have this area play with kind of lots of different colors. This is kind of um undercut. And I can use red and black, and actually I can actually even use turquoise to make that line. How about that? Okay, that I'm gonna. Do it, and I'm gonna go for the little bit of a. Um, this one is kind of messy, but this is uh, this one is kind of a cadmium red or um, scarlet lake. So I'm going to use the scarlet lake to go this one redder. It's kind of pretty dark, but it's okay. It has a lot more yellowish tone to it. Let's try it. I'm gonna go strong or yellow. So right now I'm using very thick yellow and red. because I still have a frisk head on it, so. If I don't use thick yellow, it's yellow is gonna be just kind of washed out, I think, so. And here too. And I'm gonna go red. It's a cadmium red or a scarlet lake. It's kind of orangish red, and it's just a very opaque. Sometimes it's kind of give you a stronger red feelings. 
So because it's opaque, that white is not going to shooting out. And I'm going to go with this one back in the center. And I use this red right now before I use black. You see, if I don't have this undercoat, this area is going to be a little bit too washed out looking. I want this area to glow. It makes sense. Even black. But it's kind of that black and glow instead of just kind of muted dark color, the black and glow. So I did this one and I will show this area kind of using black too. Mm -hmm. This is beautiful right here. Okay. I'm going to go this purple more. I think I'm going to use a little bit of a, a red into this purple because purple itself is kind of a little bit uh, fugitive, I call it, because it's kind of pushes away. So if I use a little bit of a primary rose, this one's going to be ooh, so dark. So I'm going to use red to bring out this purple a little bit stronger. That's better. Let's try this purple. So when I'm painting, this is kind of not like this one is going to be this way and done because I will never know how that things turn out because I just kind of try it. I just do it and it turned out perfect. And sometimes better than I am thinking, sometimes not, but it's okay. So, you know, if it's kind of turn out that way, I'm just kind of accept instead of forget about it. All right. That's pretty good. So this area is much stronger than this area. So I want to go that area too. Okay. This area I can actually go purplish. It's kind of greenish, but I'm going to go this one, a little bit darker on purple, reddish purple. It has a little, I like that little greenish. Thank you, because I'm going to go with that. I did this one red, but I think I like that little bit of green. You see, I just kind of do this one little by little. I'm not trying to finish everything at once. I'm just kind of trying to spread kind of do it little by little, sometimes detail, sometimes spread out. It's, there's no such thing as kind of you have to do it this way or that way, you just kind of uh, find out where that is. But it's the only one thing I will do is I am I did all those um, 
what do you call the undercut before I did this. And that this area is going to be a little bit darker. So I'm just going to put this one a little bit before I do that little bit about that detail thing, because I want to push this one down a little bit. All right. And I think this one is kind of flips over kind of look. All right. I cannot see it, but I will just make it. Bottom is a little darker. I'm just going to draw the line. Okay, I just want to help this here. I'm just going to cut a little bit. So if you look at it, I am just kind of using purple and red and purple and red, nothing more. Because purple and red, again, it's not just kind of only purple and red because the between colors are uh, much stronger than. So I'm going to put a little bit of red to differentiate this one. Okay, this area is going to be later muted, so I think perfect. I'm going to do this one a little bit. So yellow, and I think I used a little bit of red too. So kind of a, this one is kind of a push it back and it's make this one stand out. Like a, a, this is kind of not pretty girlfriend. This is pretty girlfriend, pretty friend. I call this one, I think sometimes I make this one like a, a Miss Texas or you know, make a kind of metaphor. It's kind of same thing. All right, so this one has, so it's kind of, I developed this one this way and uh, I'm just, because uh, um, how long do we have? Oh, I have to show cherries. This one is going to dry out. Now, go for the cherries. It's a red time. Soon it's yeah. ten after. It's ten after eleven, and we actually go till noon. Um, so I don't know if you want to go or not. Oh, so we have a you know, we have time, right? We do. We we actually got started a little bit early, so we've got okay. plenty of time. Okay. So I'm gonna go to I think you say we don't have time at the no. So I'm gonna go with this one red. I have a, this one, I think it's a mixture of permanent rose. I wanted to use permanent rose and the uh, cadmium red or stellar lake, but this one is I have a little bit of allergen crimson, but this one is okay. So I'm gonna go with this one red. Oh ooh, I have changed, I changed my mind. I changed my before I did red, I'm gonna go blue. Because it's kind of if you look at this one, can you see this part? It's kind of very dark right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go with Prussian blue. All right. In this area, I have it. I'm gonna make the shade, shade shaded area. I think it's what's kind of shadow. You see this area? And I'm making this one with pressure view. I do it this way because after I applied red, okay. 
I don't want to disturb the red. This way, the red is going to be clean, so I don't have to blend too much. Okay, this way too. Right, just a little bit lighter. I think I can scrub. I push uh, this one so. Okay. And I think it's even this area doesn't have a uh, darker color. I want to put the stem is right here. And uh, it's right inside here. So I'm going to make a little darker. So you're actually on top of yellow. You are making a drawing of a cherry shadow. So you're making a cherries. And this one is a little different way of painting it because I usually might go red. This way, after I did this one blue, and later I can just kind of cover all over the place with the uh, red, and the cherry is going to be right there. So I think that I wanted to try this one. I wanted to show you this way so it's kind of can do something different way. So when I do this one, do you think I know this one is going to turn out exactly? I don't know, but I'm just kind of trying. If I don't do it, I will never know. This one is going to turn into green. This area has a little bit of yellow, so I'm just going to leave it as is. Okay, does it look like cherries? Maybe not, but it's okay. This one actually I think is so I changed a little bit of a different purple. But... All right, I guess I'm just going to let this one dry, okay? Okay, um, what I wanted to do here is, um, I think it's kind of dry. So I'm gonna go with a little bit of a green. Okay, I wanted to kind of show how I wanted to make this calyx, calyx. Is that what I say, calyx? All right, just say calyx. I think with this green. Because I know this area is gonna be a green. And a reddish green. And this one has a little bit of something in it. I like uh, iris because it has so many interesting uh, kind of. A, I love this one. It has a little bit of paper like. And this one right here. So I'm using green, but it looks like black because underneath has red on it. Blend this one out. So now I see this area, uh, I put the red on it and it looks too red instead of a, a little bit of a yellowish. So what I'm gonna do is, it's green. And you see without red, it looks green. I'm gonna go a little more yellow. It's kind of not right now, it's kind of standing out too much. So if I put a little bit of a yellow, it's gonna push it back a little bit further. That's what I'm thinking. So I'm gonna go red more later. Okay. 
heart. And I'm going to draw this one very well. Burn sienna and red to, before I do detail, this one. To brown. It's red. And I'm going to need to be a little darker. And this is a little redder. And this one is going to be darker. So once kind of first coat and second coat, and after that, the color actually can stay uh, wet kind of for a while. And it's, even if it's dry, you can actually um, blending this one much easier than on top of the uh, dry uh, paper. So I just kind of spread out this one all over the place. And now I'm gonna go back and maybe just kind of blend this one a little bit out instead of standing out too strong. So. another one right next to it so brown and red kind of i use the burnt sienna only and it like looks a little bit dead looking so i'm using actually red into it burnt sienna and red mix this is dark right here so i'm using very thick pigment not watery pigment Let's use some red. See, I think it's the kind of when I'm using red, it just makes me uh, more kind of vibrant. And I call it like blood transfusion. It looks alive somehow. And that's how I feel. Yeah, I'm gonna go this green stronger. I'm gonna go with a little more yellow because this green is too better. This is kind of, the, I have a palette. I think probably I have a, um, because that one was, I was using at the, uh, one of the boys workshop and explaining what the green is like. So probably there's a lots of a different green. I have a probably Viridian and hookers and I think it's burnt CNS there. It's for me, it doesn't matter what kind of a, a, a green you use, just kind of mix to make it uh, kind of how you like it. I think it's, that's all there is to it. So after this, yeah, I'm going to try this one, okay? So I can actually work on this one a little bit more. I think I'm gonna go black first and I'm gonna work on this one because right now I stand out too much, but after we apply the black, this one is gonna go back Okay, I'm going to mute it so it's not going to be too noisy, okay? All right. I Right now, I'm gonna go with the black because our first coat, I'm not trying to make this first coat perfect. I'm just gonna have this background a little darker so I can see this flower better. And I have a um, kind of whole bunch of the black mixed in it. I need to just kind of loosen up. So I can actually kind of um, see the uh, this, yeah, I don't want to go a little thick either because if I go thick, when I try to make the, this painting works on the edges, sometimes it's kind of bleeding. So it usually kind of gray, darker than gray, 
that. I have lots of I have a kind of a grayish tone side. I think I can just use it. You see, I met my black with the um, indigo and sepia and permanent allergen crimson. And this one look like I have leftover purple in it, that dioxin I put in, so it's gonna do the purplish, which is okay, because dioxin is purple, is which is purple, red, and blue. So I'm going to just kind of take this one from this part. So I'm just kind of applying this one so I can see what's going on with my painting because without white paper, and I, uh, things are different than actually darker background because I know I want to make this background darker. Usually kind of my intention is not to make a dark background, but sometimes I have to because I made a big mess usually and uh, I have to make, I change it to, uh, my background darker, but this one from the beginning, I know that I want to make this background darker. So. And even first coat that I do this one, it's kinda, I don't wanna make too much um, kind of brush stroke all over the place. And sometimes if you do that, it's kind of too, the background can be too disturbing. It's like not dis disturbing mean, it's just getting too much attention. So I don't mind this background being uh, not uh, kind of dark perfect or something, but I don't want this one to have too much brush stroke like uh, kind of applying here, so. It is kind of interesting. Sometimes um, the dark background, but if you have a lot of big, kind of, if you have a, Lots of a small one all over the place, it just even unifies, that's okay. But you have a one kind of a big brush stroke or two and uh, it's kind of a little bit, um, doesn't go together, that's the one actually stand out too much. So I cannot see what I want to see. This is the area I want to be pay attention. Okay, let me see. Sure. Mm. 
And I can push it some with the later, but I, I want to push this one as much as I can. If I don't push this one because of that, um, that background very nice, uh, you know, the older I, uh, fish kit I did is going to be not show up. So, but I don't want to go too much because then I can always bring that black into it later. So, I can stress it better. So. You see, I can actually see, if you can just kind of cut right next to it, this one I didn't do, oh, no black background, and this one is black background. Can you see how this one, it kind of starts to standing up more? The charge paper works really good. I like it. Go this way. Thank you. 
We're twisting around things. It's kind of hard to see. I think it's after that, um, usually kind of one more coat with the background, dark background, usually um, after I finish the work kind of inside, because sometimes, you know, when I'm working, I drop the um, water or something and I kind of make another mess on the background. So if I just kind of finish it now and I have to constantly try to protect my background, not make a mess to contract the water, but I know that I'm going to have a one more cut and I don't have to obsess about, obsessed with about uh, saving my background. So I like to usually have a one coat to set the uh, stage almost like, and after that, kind of when I finish it, I will go for the one more time to finalize the background. So yeah. did you say this was just a, a solid black that you're using? No, this one is actually, I have this one. I have a mixture of the, this black is uh, indigo and aluminum crimson and sepia in it. And I had a lot lots of mixture. So I just kind of uh, loosen up and use it. So it's not black because, uh, uh, you know, if you have a black, just black itself doesn't have a good solid uh, body. So it just kind of looks, this one just looks a little lighter because yeah, I used lots of water, but I think it's, a, I never used to just kind of black itself. So I don't know what color look like, but uh, uh, this one is actually like a more, I think lamp black is a little bit of cooler. So it's kind of probably had a more blue than anything else. So it's kind of cooler, but lamp, I think it's ivory black is a little warmer and a little bit kind of reddish maybe, I'm not sure. But if you wanted to use that way, just kind of, I don't know, it's color is never going to be stand out as a uh, kind of dark black. So now you can see clearly what's going on in here, right? So I think the side is kind of a, I need to dry again. At least at this size, I can actually work on this one. And after this one dries out, I need to um, have a, uh, Take the frisk head is going to be off after one more coat of this one because I cannot take the frisk head off. But I can actually use this area, maybe solid. I can see, it. and I can bring out this one a little bit. But I can already kind of see. It. So I can actually show this one today. Okay. No, I just can't. Yeah, I will just mute it because it's going to be too much noise. I want to use red, new one.
clean brush, not blue brush. All right. And I am actually go little bit of a yellow on top because it's not that strong right here. The yellow wasn't that strong. And red is going to be a um, mixture of a scalar lake and the permanent rose. Let me see, can I need a permanent rose on that side? It's more reddish tone. That is permanent rose. Hope for the best. Looks very dark. But this is the stand that I don't want to go to. You see, I'm going to go this one dark, flat. And this one is going to meet the yellow. I should have mixed the color before. I just kind of one cherry. I just did go. And sometimes if I don't mix it, just color changes. But I think it's just okay. So after this one dries, this darker um, underneath of this red, this blue will show up much better. I don't want to go to see a little bit strong. Kind of mingle it a little bit. Blend out. Because at this point, this one is not going to push and pull too much because this pigment itself is so thick. They are not going to make a blossom. They just kind of almost kind of stay until you move. You see? So I will wait until this one completely dry. So it's kind of after I put the blue on it and red on it, and the shapes are kind of already done. And uh, uh, I just need to take the frisk it off. And just kind of, I have to make this one. Oh, just kind of, can you see it? So dark and, uh, uh, you know, light are so kind of already shaped, so. That's not the one that I want to start with. Let's go for this black. Black and red and green and so I have a black right here. The computer is just kind of so this time I'm gonna have a size four and a size very little. Okay, size four. Okay, and I am going to make. And sometimes red, sometimes um, black. Let's gonna put this one side by side. So it's kind of instead of the hair sweep exactly, I will just kind of play with my own way to give this one a little bit of a character. Soon you have about 15 minutes left. All right, I'm going. So, this, right. you know, I'm making this 
Calix work. So this is going to be a. Um, I'm going to finalize this calyx. So it's kind of this time we are making a, this beautiful calyx. This is a calyx, right? Uh, I, I don't have my diagram up. Let me see. Yeah, I think it's a calyx. I think that's how you pronounce. <laughs> It's not the space. Is it? I don't know. The space in the stem. Is I'm, not seeing... stem? Hmm? I'm not seeing the calyx on here. Oh, maybe not. What do you call this one then? That part is the space. Space? Space. It's the. How do you spare that? Covering the over. S P A T H E. Oh, spade. Okay. You see, this area was before a little bit of a door. Is when I apply this kind of dark line. Can you see it looks a little bit sparklier, kind of brighter looking? Okay, this kind of be a little bit darker. So when I paint, kind of usually, kind of I play with every corner or kind of, I don't want to neglect one area because it's not important. I don't know, it's kind of, I just go make everything stand out. It's not stand out because I want to make this top part beautiful, kind of a strong, and I don't want to make this area too dull and, it doesn't go together, so I just make everything obsessive compulsive. You see, it making this area darker. So I'm using black and red mixture. And upper part, just make a little bit of a blackish. So this area is kind of darker. So I'm going to go dark black. I still have a frisket on it. And after frisket is off, I can actually kind of tone it down. Maybe some of them has to go, some of them stay. You see this area, it looks a little bit of a kind of paper, paper like it's a bit dark and light. And this one goes up. They're like a um, clothes, kind of dress, kind of like a optical chiffon. Kind of dress kind of holding here and there kind of a feeling that I have. Some you uh, are alternating red. You see this kind of pure this red and the black alternately. So here it's kind of a little lighter and I'm just kind of using red to just draw the line. Kind of, but they have a little bit of vein all over the place. It's the kind of drawing vein. And I'll go far starker and so I'm gonna go for the black right here. I'm glad that I'm showing this character because lots of time when I go to workshop, you know, it's, it's kind of start to neglect this part because um, it's kind of when we do the flower and we just usually running out of time. So we just kind of neglect that this one is pretty good. So. Okay. 
I haven't picked the frisk kit off, so I'm just going to keep it until I'm ready to take it off. So this area is going to be Overall, I'm going to make it a little dark. I'm going to go this one. So now I'm using smaller brush to make this area. Before, I just because it doesn't darken up. So I'm gonna go darker here. So before I used a green, but now I'm using actually more blackish. It has, I think this one is kind of continuation of this one right here. This flower is very interesting. This is dark. I need to blend this one out with red. This is kind of very strong red. This pink, red. So in the beginning, if I go this red, it will spread out all over the place. So kind of generally, I spread out or kind of lighter color. But when I go for the dark, that's kind of a lighter, very specific way instead of spreading all over. Can you see how dark I went? So you kind of push it back this one dramatically. In this part, because right now I just kind of put the red on it, but it's, I wanted to make this bottom part dark. It's this underneath is going to be very dark. And I think I'm going to go just purple a little more than this. So then I put this dark underneath, this kind of glows a little better. So sometimes I think that there's a way of saying what they are. I think somebody said, like, I think this is an opera. And some people were saying something different. This painting is not like a, this painting is not done until kind of fat lady sings or something. I think that must be opera. So painting is kind of, I did this one. It's like, a, I never ever said this is done this area. And I will always see overall how things are working. And if it, it didn't kind of, it doesn't work and I have to go back and redo it. So 
kind of I always kind of put myself when I do this one, I never ever think this is it, this is done because I always keep my mind. I think it's because I think it, this is done and it's like my expectation is kind of about done and later it's not done, I get disappointed, right? So I just kind of put myself the expectation very kind of, it's not, I don't even put the expectation. I will see how it goes later. That's my idea. So now, can you see now this one is kind of bottom part. So I just want to show this area. It's kind of pretty much done. And actually, even frisk it on it, I have this little bit of feeling what was going on. It's kind of pretty. So that's going to be, I think it's just kind of, uh, I see it. It's going to be looks good. And I'm going to make this area a little bit darker. It's a little bit. All right, soon we get five minutes. Uh, I do want to mention if you're online with us now and you are signed up for the workshop, we are going to take a one hour break. Okay. And if you haven't put your frisket on your drawings yet, you might want to do that, that yeah, during the lunch break. Get it dry. Yeah, if you wanted to finish the paint, I think it's, we're going to make this one. And I think. I think it's a real home, so everybody has their colors, most of the colors, so it's going to be okay. So um, I think, I don't think I sent you the uh, material list, but I think there's a, some color. I think it's all, only the one color is ultramarine. I think everybody has ultramarine, so I think that'll be okay. So can you see this one? It's kind of how I work with my flower. Little by little, but I think it is kind of already pretty good, huh? It looks wonderful. Yeah. So, uh, can I, I have to develop this bottom part a little more because it has a little yellow in it? Can you see? And this color, this is going to be cleaner. And I think this one, after I make it this background black, I think that area is going to be looks. I think I like this flower actually. Mm -hmm. So, you know, thanks for coming. And I actually had fun. So I, I'm I actually glad I painted this. So I'm gonna kind of stir working on this one little by little. And so this is, I just wanted to show you how I finished this area. This is kind of how I finished it. So it, it's amazing. Are you going to give us a and look at the cherry? Can you see this one is kind of almost <laughs> right? You can see this one is already kind of a shape it. Because highlight is here, highlight, I have to, uh, that scrub, um, what they call this, take the uh, frisket off and just kind of gently scrub off to give some more kind of stronger highlight. And if I want to make this some of the area a little darker, I can do that. But I think so far it's kind of came out pretty nicely, right? So, yes, beautiful. And sometimes you don't have to just kind of keep fighting, but sometimes kind of red is kind of pretty thick like a uh, cadmium uh, cadmium red or a scalar leg is kind of opaque -ish. and if i want to have a strong red cherries or flower if i uh, i apply kind of it's a hard to uh kind of uh what do you call feathering it or blending it and it's with the shadow so because that's why i go backward if you do blue first you don't have to fight with your red to give that shade it's kind of shadow so that's why I do it. right so um, I'm going to keep painting this one and I'm probably going to finish this painting. I like it, so. Will you give us the demo of the, uh, copy of the demo along with the class of this demo? Does that make sense? We the will demo will still be video. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry. Whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> um, maybe I'm going to finish it and you can, Post the finished painting. Maybe that's that kind of. Otherwise, I I get so lazy. I never paint it. I never finish it. So if you say that like a mini finished painting, then I will paint this one. You just kind of watched it, but uh, on workshop you are going to paint uh, together. So that's going to be more uh, hands on. I like that. So. 
So I keep painting to this one work. Oh, this brush is too little. All right, soon we need to uh, end the meeting. And if you. All right. Uh, so I think it's turned out pretty good, huh? It's gorgeous. I the like it. Is incredible. And that's, that's what's the demonstration today. Thank you for coming.